they make me happy to do and it makes me happy to share the thing that I'm good at with you all. So in my last art-related video, I talked about how um, because of time constraints it can be a little more difficult for me to include the sketch aspect in these videos. And I wanted to try and include that today because I think it can be fun. <laughs> so, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen these little one-panel comics I've been doing. Um, I've been doing one every once in a while, and just kind of as they come to me. So I thought today we'll actually do one together from start to finish. I may have to edit a little bit just for the sake of time, but other than that, <laughs> we'll do one together. So I'm going to show you the things that I'll be using today. The first is just an eraser, regular white eraser. Then we have this Prismacolor Verithin pencil, non-photo blue. I have about 20 of these. I really like them. I use them all the time for pretty much every sketch I do. Then I have just this regular Pilot um, High Tech V5 Grip pen. It's not an art pen, it's just a regular pen. But I like it. So we're going to use that. And then I have these two Copic markers. They're Copic Chow. And um, one is W5, and one is E71. And one of them is getting quite worn out. I'm pretty sure it's this one. It's almost on its last legs. <laughs> but it'll do for today. So, And then just a ruler and my handy dandy pencil sharpener, which I love. It's the best pencil sharpener ever. I'll show you some of the previous ones that I've done. This is just my sketchbook. So, this one up here says, Where are you going? And then she's saying, Nowhere. Anywhere. This one says, What's wrong? And she says, Nothing everything. This one says, how are you? And she says, I'm fine. Terrible. This one says, may I sit here? And she says, sure. Don't. This one says, Want to talk about it? And she says, No, not to you. This one says, Did you see it coming? And she says, Of course. How could I? So, I don't have too, too many of them. If you follow me on Instagram, you've definitely seen them because I've been posting them a lot. Oh, my Instagram is in the description if you want to follow me. It's ALB in Wonderland on Instagram.
These little drawings are something of a little art therapy for me. And I'm trying this new thing where I don't look at any screens before I go to sleep. I've read a lot of articles that say if you look at your phone or you're answering emails or you're watching television before you go to sleep, it will be harder for you. And there was a day a little while ago where my sleep schedule got kind of messed up. And ever since then, I've been having trouble sleeping at night. So I'm trying to get to sleep at a good time. And part of doing that is not looking at any screens. But I have trouble getting sleepy. So my new thing is to just put on either an ASMR video or an audiobook, like my Lord of the Rings audiobook, <laughs> and just draw. And lately these have been coming out. I'm not really sure just yet what I'm going to do with them. At first I thought maybe stickers or something, but I was talking to a friend and she kind of said what I was thinking about it, which is that they're almost too sad for stickers. They weren't really meant to be sad when I was making them, but... I don't know. I guess that's just how they turned out. To me, they're more about... Not necessarily sadness, but... Just the ways in which we have to tell little white lies to accommodate for other people's feelings in our lives. I think everybody has to do that sometimes, you know? So that's kind of what they're about. That's something that I struggle with a lot and that I'm trying to get better at. I think that I'm too accommodating to other people and I would like to be less that way. I would like to be more assertive, and I would like to be able to speak up when things are bothering me, or when I don't feel like my needs are being met. I'm trying to learn to do that more. It's not something that comes naturally to me. So I'm, I'm trying to be more assertive. <laughs> But that's kind of what these drawings are about. It's just, just the tiny little ways that we kind of have to make self-sacrifices to just keep people in our lives and even strangers happy, I guess. <laughs> I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about because we've, we've all had those little moments. And even with these little drawings, I don't think that I'm necessarily disagreeing with them. I think that they're necessary sometimes <laughs> for our own wherewithal to just get through our day. Sometimes we have to be accommodating in a way that isn't I guess, true to ourselves. But, anyway. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little too existential in these videos. It's not my intention. In a way, making these videos is a little bit of an outlet for me. I love talking to you guys, because you really get it. I think a lot of you relate to what I'm talking about, and I'm always glad that we can share that understanding.
I always want to talk about the weather in these videos, and I realize what a cliche thing that is to talk about. But that was never really something that interested me until I started living on my own. And suddenly it became like this thing that actually affected me. Because until now, I guess it didn't really affect me on the whole. Not in a profound way. But the sun is something I'm weirdly grateful for now. And I notice how much it improves everyone's day, I guess. <laughs> Especially now that I live in a big city. Because I think it's just part of growing up in a small town that I grew up, you know, saying hi to everyone I see and asking them how their day is, and people don't really do that here. They think it's kind of odd. <laughs> Maybe you think it's kind of odd, too. But when the weather's good, everybody's in a really good mood. So I guess that's why everybody talks about it so much. to be careful not to stop talking because I have a tendency to get really focused and absolutely forget that I'm filming myself. It's kind of difficult to multitask in this way because I want what I'm working on to be good for you so that it's interesting on a visual level. But of course it needs to be interesting on a level that helps if you aren't watching the actual video. Because like I said before, a lot of times lately when I watch ASMR videos, I'm not really interested in the visual stimuli aspect of them. Not to say that that isn't good, just for like my current purposes, I try to just listen to someone talking nicely and being gentle with me. I think that's a nice way to end your night. Just someone being gentle and kind with you and speaking nicely. I'm hoping that my microphone setup will pick up a lot of the pencil noises. I've been really struggling with my mic setup lately. Not to say that I'm completely unhappy with it, but I've been trying a lot of new things with virtually every video I make. I don't know if you've even noticed. You may not have, and that's okay too. But, I've been trying new things because I want to make them as good as I can. So, I'm just hoping it'll be okay. <laughs> I think I hold my pencil funny. You know, I hold it really tightly in my hand. With art, they kind of encourage you to be, like, more loose like this, but I always have a really firm grip on it, I guess. It's probably not the best thing, but it works for me. this girl really fun hair because I like I like big fun hair so I'm gonna give her a big old victory roll right in the front here 
then her hairline will be like here. And let's see, where are we going to put the speech bubbles? <laughs> Probably here. I really like these pencils. I recommend them because they're not too waxy. I've tried a lot of other ones, even even also by Prismacolor, like the same brand. They all get a bit waxy and then they can be hard to erase. And that's kind of the point of these pencils, you know, to be able to erase them. I want to give her, like, a bow here. <laughs> like a big, a big bow. I'm thinking it would be kind of made out of sheer fabric. And then it would be like in a, kind of a head, like a scarf scarf kind of way, but tied around mostly like a headband. I'll just tuck it in behind the hair here. And I'm thinking, just for the sense of space, that we're going to have a lot of hair here, so it would probably be best to the, the other caption either here or here. The only reason I'm not itching to put it here is because of the victory roll, but I'm thinking now it might actually fit best there. Just kind of block in the arm here. And then the shoulder would be about here. And she'll have a whole bunch of curls here. There, now it doesn't look quite so creepy. Giving her actual eyes. Usually these take me about an hour to do from start to finish, so um, it can take me more sometimes, <laughs> but it's, it's a nice way to kind of end my night doing them before bed. It just makes the most sense here. Sorry hair, you're beautiful, but you can't stay. Time to go. I think I might put a zine together of these little drawings. Maybe for teacup. Not sure. <laughs> There's so many things that I want to do. I like. I'm totally, totally uh, full on lists in my head 
of all the things I want to do. Sometimes all of my dreams are immobilizing because I get so many ideas in my head. And then I don't end up doing any of them. I would like to not be like that. And to actually do the thing, you know? Alright, so I can actually block in some stuff down here now that I know her. Arm will actually be showing. So I'm going to start with my pen now and it's good to always wipe off all the like goobery bits that sometimes get on the tip of your pen. That just happens. <laughs> I always call them ink boogers. That's so gross, right? That's just what I call them. And probably a thinner pen would be better for this if you were going to do something like this yourself. It's kind of one of those things where I started doing the series in this pen so I can't really stop. But it's a little bit more unpredictable than I would like. So with most things, I would usually like to lay in colors before I go in with the lines, but because I'm using those Copic markers and this pen doesn't smear on this paper, I don't really worry about it too much. <laughs> this sketchbook does not have the best paper. So I'm not going to recommend it to you. But I've been trying to get back into using sketchbooks again, because I haven't for years. So this was just one that I had started a long time ago, probably two or three years ago. And it seemed like a waste to start a whole new book when I've got this one in the works. Sketchbooks are a really nice thing to keep, though, and to work on. Because you can look back through them like they're a book. <laughs> Versus what I've been doing, which is just drawing on scraps of paper. Which all gets a bit loose and annoying to keep organized. Probably not too many good sounds with the pen. It's pretty quiet with the tiny ink ball moving around. <laughs> but hopefully, when we do the marker part. There will be some more good sounds. The past couple weeks have been really busy for me. Um, just been helping friends with moving and stuff like that. But it's been it's been good because I've been spending a lot of times with friends, which is really good for me. I've been kind of needing that. You know how sometimes you just get that way. Where, like, you really need to be with your friends. I've been feeling like that a lot lately. <laughs> and, um, for those of you who celebrate Easter, that's coming up this weekend. And I got invited to go to a good friend of mine who's having a nice dinner for that, so I'm gonna go. will be nice. I'm always up for celebrating holidays, like even if I don't really celebrate them, I think it's nice to 
go be with friends for stuff that's important to them. <laughs> then we're gonna do bow up here. I had a lot of trouble filming earlier this week because I thought my neighbor got a puppy. Um, it was there was a tiny dog that was barking a lot, um, but then it stopped. So I think maybe they were just babysitting it, or it was a friend's. I was really worried because I didn't want to go ask them to, you know, keep down. But I also needed to film. I never want to bother people unless, you know, it's actually a huge inconvenience to me. Because I think it's never intentional. People aren't trying to be rude or loud. It just happens sometimes. I'm sure I'm the same way. I get a little bit rambly when I'm doing this, huh? And the nice little cheekbone in here. And pupils. Let's throw in some fun makeup too. I kind of see this girl as like a derby girl. And her lip, her lipstick's gonna be smeared, but um, I'm not drawing that in with the ink. I'm gonna do that with the marker. As you can see, I really jump all over the place when I'm doing this sort of thing. I don't really work from one particular spot, so I don't really have a method. Just whatever stands out to me that I feel like doing. <laughs> I'll often stop working in one spot and go work on another. Hair is the most fun thing. I always sketch it in really simply, but it never turns out that way when I'm actually doing the final part. I think I'm gonna do the border. So I'm gonna need a ruler. <laughs> I really like um, clear rulers because you can see exactly what you're doing. Whenever I have to use a non-clear ruler, I get worried, because it's harder to tell. And another line there. side. Line it up nice and nice and straight. There we go. I'll just fiddle up this little corner here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do an extra line right here though. Just to make it a little bit thicker. And 
cards at the bottom. A bit of a perfectionist. I'm pretty happy with how this one's going. I don't ever have a plan with them, which is even more of a pressure situation when you're filming yourself doing it. But with many things in life that we do, sometimes you just have to cross your fingers and hope for the best. So now we're going to do some marker work. And we're just using two colors. And um, one of them is a little darker and warmer than the other. And one of them is a little lighter and a more cool tone. So these markers are fun because on one end there's like um, a square broad tip. on the other end that's kind of a brush tip and for the most part that's the one that I use because I don't know you get more control that way in my opinion and I really recommend Copic markers they're expensive unfortunately but the fun thing about them is that they're refillable. So you can buy one and then buy the refillable ink that goes inside. And you end up spending a lot less money in the long run, comparably to other art markers on the market like Prismacolor. Because those ones... Um, not specifically Prismacolor, but a lot of brands. They're not refillable. So you have to buy a new one every time one runs out. Which definitely adds up. And I'm just starting close to her face and working out to some highlights here. Sometimes I'm very adamant about like coloring in the lines, <laughs> but other times I think it looks nice not to. They always would tell us to color in the lines when we were kids. I'm sure you remember. My parents were really big on art for me ever since I started showing promise that I was good at it. So they were always very encouraging of that, which I'm really lucky for. They took me doing art very seriously, and that was really important to me, and I realize now as an adult made a huge difference. If I was ever, you know, painting or something in my room, my parents would leave me to it, <laughs> not ask me to do things, because they saw that as kind of like doing homework, it's valuable time and that I needed to be left alone to do it. I think that can be accredited largely to my sister being an artist, and she's a lot older than me. So I think they saw in her like what that can lead to, and my family really is artistic, so that was something that was valuable to them and they took very seriously. So I feel very fortunate for that. <laughs> I know it's not the case for a lot of artists. I'm 
I don't take that for granted at all. These brushes, or markers I guess, but they feel like brushes. They're really fun. I got to try them for the first time um, when I was at San Diego Comic Con because they were giving them out for free. <laughs> They were just, you know, giving them out. And I was like, sure, I'll try one. Because <laughs> I knew how expensive they normally were. And when I finally got to try them, I was so excited. I loved them. They're very fun. I'm just kind of trying to make it seem like the lipstick's smeared. <laughs> we'll do some work on the bow. Add some shading. Very important. <laughs> Sorry, I changed my mind on putting that one away. Just gonna do a bit of a blouse down here. And right here as well. This is my marker that's kind of running out, so I hope it functions enough. I'm sure you can kind of tell it's running out. I'm kind of having to press on it a little differently to try and get some color. Just like that, fill in some folds in the fabric. It's very important to show folds in fabric. It makes it much more realistic and believable. Even in cartoons, you should always try and show, you know, folds in fabric and um, like seams. And that's kind of a hard thing to learn, and it's something that I'm still trying to get good at. It's not something that comes natural to me. It's something that you can get practice with by going on to um, like fashion websites, like, I don't know, Forever 21 or something like that, and just saving some pictures of, you know, sweaters on models and stuff, and just practicing drawing them that's how you'll get good at it. Remembering how folds um, are around the arms and things like that. And I'm just gonna do in some little sparkles just before we finish up. Because it wouldn't be me if it wasn't a little sparkle. I 
can swim up here. Perfect. Now one last thing that's really important to do. We have to sign it. 